uh, Soompi.com. Go to it. Hey, what's going on, everybody? David Fung here with Make It In The Motherland at Soompi.com, and I'm here with Korean-American rapper MYK. For the audience that may not be familiar with you or may not know that much about you if they've heard of you, can you give a brief introduction to yourself? Uh, well, my name is MYK, and I'm actually from around here, San Francisco Bay Area area, from South Bay, actually. And then uh, I moved to Korea about five years ago and met this dude uh, called Tablo from this group Epic High. Mm -hmm. And then started working with him and then kind of became uh, like an unofficial, official, whatever you want to call it, like fourth member of the group. Yeah. Can you go into a little bit more detail about how you met Tablo and then got involved with Epic High? Okay, um, well, he was actually, he went to high school with my cousin. So he was friends with my cousin, and then um, when I went out there, my cousin was actually living out there, working out there at the time, and I was kind of staying with him. So basically just through, you know, talking about, you know, doing music and possibly doing music in Korea, his name came up. He's like, oh, I went to, you know, my high school buddies actually started a group called Epic High out here, and maybe you guys can meet up. And then basically that's, it was just set up like that, and then we just met. Um, I played him like a couple songs that I did, and then you know he he, I think I bought his albums like, like as soon as I heard I was gonna meet this guy, I wanted to hear you know what, what Epic High was all about, and then we were both on the same page. We both wanted to do similar things musically and stuff, so we just started like collaborating. Was it difficult to make the initial decision to to move over there to Korea? For me, actually, it wasn't because I wasn't doing much here and I was looking for something kind of new. Mm -hmm. So I went over there not like too directly for the sake of doing music at first, but more to just get out of the states, get out of mm -hmm. the city I was in and what I was doing and just to experience something new. So actually, I went over there just to kind of just to just to kind of play, hang out and just, you know. Did you ever expect that this would have happened? Uh, I don't think I, well, I don't know, but I, I definitely didn't plan on it. Uh, what kind of advice do you have for other Asian Americans who uh, have the desire to pursue an entertainment or media career overseas back in their motherland? Or? Um, <clears throat> the biggest thing is the language, I guess, especially if you're trying to rap or sing or anything that involves writing lyrics, then then you should definitely uh, be up on the language, I think. Because for me, like, I still have a lot of difficulty writing lyrics because it is like a second language. It's not, you know, I'm not completely fluent in it. So I wish that I had studied it more um, as a kid. What do you like for uh, Korean artists? Korean artists, uh, I'm a huge Epic High fan. <laughs> uh, I like them a lot. Um, but seriously, like, I didn't know too much about Korean hip hop until I, I learned about Epic High. Like they put me on to a lot of the good stuff, the best stuff, you know, that, that's out there. Um, Drunken Tiger, of course, Dynamic Duo, Gecko, uh, and Cheja, you know, exactly, from Dynamic Duo. Uh, can you talk to us a little bit um, about your May 30th show in Seattle? Yeah. It's with Jay Park. I think it's dope. I think I'm, I'm, I'm stoked to do it. I feel like I'm lucky to do it. I think it's cool that I get to meet him when I do, and you know, you know hopefully we, we could talk about doing other things, like other shows later on in the future. I think it's cool. What does it take to be, uh, you know, like, to make it as, as an artist that, and when you guys are on the come up? Mm, I'm still learning, for sure. Like, I, I'm far from there, I think, but um, what I've been kind of learning more so recently is that just, just to keep doing like what what I always liked to do before it became touring with it and before it became recording with it. Like remember remembering the things that I'd like to do musically or, or lyrically, whatever, back like before I even started doing it as a work. Mm -hmm. The we were, we were talking earlier about how Asian hip hop is, is starting to find like its own unique sound. Yeah. Hey, can you talk a little bit about that? Um, well, yeah, you were saying that how, you know, there was a period where a lot of the hip-hop coming out of Korea or Asia was just like, they were spiting American stuff, which is true and which is still true, like, that happens a lot, you know, you get that, but uh, more, you know, the last maybe five, I don't know, five, seven years, they've, you know, been kind of been developing their own sound, I guess I can speak for Korea, I don't really know about Japan or China or any other Asian countries, but definitely um, there's been like uh, like a pattern and kind of a trend or kind of like a, a, a style that's come out of Korean hip hop music. You'll hear it in, when you listen to a lot of Epic High singles. Uh, you'll hear it when you listen to like maybe 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 some of the dynamic duo singles. 
myself off of the last ones, but yeah, you'll definitely hear it like. Could more you more describe more. it? Um, one one thing that is a common thing, and they're not all like this, but a lot of the singles use that formula where the verses will be like like half the half the tempo, and then they'll double double up the tempo on the, on the chorus to give it that kind of like hypeness. They turn it into like a dance feel, so that kind of appeals to you. Could still rap on it. But then, um, for those who are not too up on what rap is, they can feel it just, just musically mm -hmm. get into it, like dancing-wise. Mm -hmm. I think, um, I think uh, I heard a lot of that going on in the last couple of years. Uh, can you talk yeah. about like the sort of the Asian American artist community that's kind of coming up? Like you, Dums, Carol, you guys are all hanging out now. Yeah. When you guys maybe previously didn't, had no idea about each other. I have known Kiro for about five years, mm -hmm. and I've known Dumb for about maybe two or three. Like, I, I did, definitely didn't know them too well before. Uh, I just think that they're both really good at what they do, and I'd like to surround myself with them as much as possible so that I could, like, copy how they're being good. Mm -hmm. and, <laughs> and everyone else, like, you know, there's so many other Asian American artists, but I just think that it's I'm always I'm constantly being impressed at the same time being kind of like okay I, I have to do better right. <laughs> type thing so it's definitely growing I think it's dope mm -hmm. and I just try to keep up okay. www.sumpi.com for all latest news and exciting info on Asian American music yo <clears throat> yeah I'm a mellow guy, but on the mic I'm a psycho. Put me on the stage, watch how insane I go. Korean mom say I go. The type to make five albums halfway, not one damn title. Cause I'm not with that poppy shit. Catch me chanting on a guitar ballad like I'm not the shit. Yeah, I got the gift. Two apocalypse mixed with never mind. I'm one of a kind. Forever high like the EPI. K plus the MY. Ripping the Bay plus the Soul City South Side. Yes, I get you. Stone like the Cypress. Boom, bitty, bye bye. Yo, MYK, check me out. Twitter.com backslash. O-N-E-M-Y-K, one mic. Also, look out for the mixtape coming up real soon. Read Between the Lines, it's just a mixtape. The EP coming out real soon, Lost in Translations. Plus, a special project coming out with Dumbfounded that's been in the works, so uh, stay tuned for more info on that. Yeah, that's it. Cool little fun facts. What's your favorite food, or what's your favorite uh, Korean side dish? My favorite Korean side dish. This is gonna be fun. I mean, don't laugh. But seriously, yeah. it is kimchi. Oh, yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah, it's like I think when you're like strapped for time, and if you're trying to eat some somewhat healthy, if you're if you're gonna do like a real quick lunch type thing, all you need is rice and kimchi. Mm -hmm. Seriously, like it's it doesn't get old. Like I, I, I like it's it light. Lot. It's light. It's healthy. You get a lot of fibers. You know, keep the, the digestive <laughs> right. good, and you know. I think it's good for after workouts as well. That's, that's what I heard. Um, okay, cool. one, one other thing they wanted to know is why'd you cut your hair? Oh, <laughs> it's actually something that I do like on a regular yearly, like two year basis. I just grow my hair out and I, and I shave it.